Welcome to watersystemparts.com. I hope you enjoy this series of videos we're producing to help you understand installation and operation of uh, water system products. This one is how to wire a standard three hour, three wire submersible pump control box. Be sure to contact your local electrical department prior to doing any wiring. Permits may be needed. This is a Franklin QD control box. It's typical of many others. This uh, style is used up to one horse with Franklin's. The working components are mounted on the cover, makes them easy to service. Mount the control box using round head screws. They don't tend to cut wires like flat head screws. And this is important to eliminate shorting issues in the box. Hang the box on the first screw. Then install the bottom screw. Mount the box on solid, uh, wall or post, try and screw into studs. If you have to screw into attached to wall boards, uh, try a molly bolts or similar. You can use a screwdriver to break loose the electrical knockouts. You'll probably have to use a pair of pliers to finish removing the knockout. This one decided to be a little bit tough. In this case, we remove two knockouts, one for power from the switch, one for power to the pump. We remove the other knockout now. Flexible non-metallic conduit is easy to install. It will help eliminate alignment con uh, problems with existing conduit. I like to install the wire first. Leave at least eight inches out of wire out the end. This is just one type of terminal adapter. Slide the compression nut over the wire, then the body of the adapter over the wire, then tighten the assembly to the conduit. I like to install the adapter after the wire is in the conduit. Much easier to install the adapter. Here you can tighten the packing nut down. Then you can slide the wire in the knockout hole. The adapter will go through the knockout hole enough to get the uh, jam nut on. These are half inch uh, conduit knockout, so half inch fittings are required. Both conduits are installed. Left one's for the uh, from the power from the switch, and the right one is power to the pump. Strip the insulation off the wire back about a half inch. There are four wires to the pump, green, red, yellow, and black. They're now, we are now stripping the ends off of the wires coming from the switch. These go to line one and line two in the control box. Very important, make sure your ground wires are tightly connected. These connections ground the box and carry the ground to the pump. Very important for safety issues. This is a terminal block that's inside the box. This is labeled line one, line two, power from the switch. Red, yellow, and black go to the pump. The ends of this terminal have tabs on them. These tabs go into slots that are in the box. The terminal block snaps into the control box body. <laughs> Makes it a lot easier to, to pull your wire, make your connections. In this unit, wires go underneath washers under the screws as labeled. Sometimes they can be a little difficult and you have to uh, pry the washers out a little bit so you can get the wire under them. Be sure to tighten the connections tight. You don't want any little arcing or high resistance points to create problems in the future.
Again, had to pry out a washer. One last wire. Okay, we're done wires. We need to kind of adjust the wires to fit under the cover. Uh, be careful that the wires don't uh, go very much above the, that uh, terminal strip because the components of the lid need to fit in that free space. Um, be sure there aren't any wires poking out uh, to get pinched by the cover. And be sure to align the screw, tighten the screw securely. Always have screws in the cover. This short video is brought to you by watersystemparts.com. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to another video.